Gotta let these niggas know I'm going hard as ever, man. New shit on the way. New whips on the way, nigga. New jewelry, nigga. New crib. New spots, nigga. New motherfucking everything, nigga. New trip, nigga. Man, we took a well, we took like a week off. A week, man. Hey, hey, no, no days off. Twenty twenty one. First recording of twenty twenty one, man. And so, matter uh, of fact, let me start by saying this: Amp tasked me with getting uh, our man Robert Raymond Roy, Jacksonville legend, Duval Jacksonville, County, Duval legend. All right, all right. So when one of our resolutions, we said we're gonna take this podcast a little bit more serious. We're gonna Indeed. Go a little Indeed. More, get a little bit more serious with the guests. So uh, this is our first step. Yeah, Joe's always been Joe been telling me what has it been about ten years? Yeah. <laughs> Joe 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 put me on to Joe put me on to your music a while ago. Actually you were blowing up when I first seen you. You had what was the name of the song? Uh, uh about Naked Parade. That was that the first one. one. Um Carmen Sita. Yeah. Carmen. Was, yeah, that was that's yeah, the that one. That was my it that's still is my favorite record. That's man. a good that's a good record. Fur in my lap. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, oh my god. That Fur was the my best lap one. Was that was the crazy. best one. Fur in my lap. The video, man. Let me ask you about that. Yeah, go for um, it. Go for it. You worked with Creative Control on that, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or was that after Fur in My Lap? No, but I, I I know someone from Creative Control or knew someone from Creative Control at Kind of around this, that time period. Got you, got but you. They did, it had no association with, with that particular with that video. video. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask, what was the... How, how, how did you come up with the video? Was it you? Was it the director? You know what I mean? Well... Combination? It, one of those things is... Uh, it's one of those things where... That was my first video mm-hmm. that I ever shot. Wow. Um, I had no idea whatsoever about how to even make a video right like i didn't know about contributing my own ideas to something um i didn't know that i could be like yo i want something to you know the way that i do with my music right you know where i go to my producer and i'm like yeah i want something to you know like we take part of this or we take part of that and then have it sound like this i didn't know that i could do the same thing for videos you know what i'm saying Mm. and it was kind of one of those things where If it was up to me, the the director of that video would not have been, I'm just going to be honest, he wouldn't have been my first choice. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like if the me now, the me now uh, that exists in 2020 would not have created that for my cat video. Mm. But, you know, like back then. Yeah. Can I ask you why why you feel that way? Um... I think because taste, my taste, like taste has changed, taste, uh, okay. or or not, you know what? Maybe not even changed. And I think, um, and this is something I've come to kind of understand more recently is, I think, I think, taste is something that sort of emerges. It's Indeed. almost, it's almost okay. like, it's almost like you <clears throat> discover you. It's almost like you discover it by the process of, process of elimination. Mm. You start realizing, oh, okay, yeah, like I don't like this, yeah, or like, oh yeah, I'm not into this, or like, yeah, I kind of didn't like when this happened. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and then slowly but surely, 
um, going back to like what we were talking about earlier Before, in the car, yeah, yeah. with time, it's like time sort of acts as like this filter where the things that you aren't necessarily about, those things sort of get like, like washed they, out. They, yeah. they get washed out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so yeah, it's maybe just more so knowing, knowing not necessarily what I like, but knowing more what I don't like. Oh, okay. That you makes sense. That made perfect sense. So, um, but yeah, but you know, you can't even, but you can't know that that's part of the process. Right. So you can't know that thing unless you even, you got to start the process to even, to even begin that journey. So, um, so in that moment, that's what I, that's like the only video I could have made. So you know what I'm saying? It was it was more like the video was before its time though, because around yeah, that time it was sure. well yeah, yeah, yeah. before it was, its time. Yeah, 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 for sure. It wasn't a lot of create creativity going on in videos. That time. It no, it was just pretty much you just standing in front of one place and yeah. Even uh, not the not the <laughs> shit on the quality control thing because it, that was a big movement. It was big, yeah. Some of the videos with quality control was kind of like. Not everything. I'm just not bringing that up because we yet. were just talking about it. It's kind right, of basic. Right. Yeah, not Some everything. Of the currency come, like one of the currency videos, I think it was Life Under the Scope, where he was just in a museum. I think what they white. did, though. It's pretty basic. But what they highlighted was the the persona of currency. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. think that's what kind of elevated the both of them at that time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Currency had a strong following. We know this. You know what I mean? Having such a 10 year career up to that point. But. Um, we saw him in such a new light. Like at that point, currency really welcomed us into his life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that was huge for Creative Control as well because it kind of introduced them in a in a familiar way. Like, hey, we really know this artist, you know. We we were open to seeing his videos. And <clears throat> currency isn't big on quality, you know what I mean. Uh, I think that kind of speaks for itself. He'll put out a video. You know, overnight, if mm -hmm. if he wants to, you know, and I yeah. don't think that takes away from him as an artist, you know, but I think that um, just speaking to what quality control did for currency, I think it was um, more so building and lifting his persona than being a creative yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. presence, more or less. So yeah, with that video, it was it was more like I hit up a couple people that I knew out, right out in LA, and I was like, hey, like who does videos? And let me see, yeah. And that that literally was like how I even landed on that director. Wow. Um, the guy's name was Ethan Later. Okay. And he had done a few other videos for people that were up and coming in the scene at the time. I think he did Kids in the Hall, mm. uh, Jay Davey, which was like this like underground sort of R&B group. Um, he had did, uh, I'm trying to think who else he had, he had did a video for. Maybe, uh, maybe you and I, maybe, possibly. Okay. But it was like these, like there was like this group. It was like MySpace era, type. right, right. Like that's My that's some big names in the blog era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Blog blog yep. era, MySpace era type acts, right? Mm -hmm. And he had did these videos for for them. I think one of them even got on. Um, one of them had even got on like TRL. One of those videos. Wow, um, oh, that's pretty big. But um, yeah, like they, I I think it was actually I had two different people. One of them was this guy Chris Stamp who has a, a clothing line that kind of got, I guess, big, uh, mm -hmm. stamped. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he was like, yeah, I know this guy, Ethan Later. I hit up my other homie, this guy, Donis, who was kind of doing his thing at the time. Um, Matter of fact, I've heard of um, you say Donis. Yeah, 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 the rapper. Man, you're just dropping Donis' name. Nah, man. I've heard of Donis. No, I'm just saying you just casually just dropped it. No, I'm talking about... Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, he casually stamped. I mean, yeah, you said stamp. <laughs> hey, he like you just I guess, said. I, think I, guess that. It's, I mean, I guess it's kind of big. You, you know, know what? what this, like, you know what? This, you know what? This reminds me of. I saw this actually recently on Twitter. I love Twitter for this reason because there's all these dumbass like like just stupid memes and shit that you'll you'll find on Twitter. Oh yeah. Uh, but I saw one where it was just like parties in L.A. or something like that, yeah. and then the dude was like. I was like, you don't even know who that is, dude. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then he's, like, that's, he's like, oh, that's Jesus. Yeah. You know what I'm like, like, our Lord and Savior? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Like, uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, so I, I, forgive me if that happens. You but yeah, like, yeah, Rob, <laughs> yeah, Rob, you just casually just mentioned Just Donis dropping names. Yeah. At the time, he was pretty big in the, not so much now, but he was big in the blog. Yeah, era, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, 
real quick, let's say this. For those who don't know who you are, um, at the time, all right, so after Fur and My Cap, yeah. I, I, I remember Pharrell giving you high praise. Yeah, yeah. Kanye, yeah, I yeah. mean, you. I was, uh, Kanye had um, he had a website called Kanye University, mm-hmm. and he used oh, yeah, it, he used that. it like a blog basically. Yeah. And you know, he would post architecture models, videos yep. from other artists, a new artists. Yep, yep. Uh, pretty much whatever he wanted to post, he posted it on there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like my, my video was on Kanye University. So. You had gotten a lot of attention early on in your in in your career. How old were you at that point? Uh, like probably thirty. Wow. Yeah. And I, prior- I moved out of Jacksonville when I was twenty nine. So let me ask this: Was that a a uh, shifting point for you moving to LA? Yeah, you could say that. You could say that. Um, it was kind of crazy to me that I wait. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all can Guilty. drag our feet. Yeah, I mean, hey, look. My feet got uh, weights attached. I'm getting, I'm, I admit, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting better. I'm not as bad as I was really bad at I'm, one point, but yeah. I'm getting better. I'm like what they would call a late bloomer. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. everything that I ever did in my life. It was always even my mom. So she said when I came out the when I came out the womb, she said I took forever to even come ah, out. Like, that's to come funny. Out. You that's funny. That? Yeah. So it's almost like every single thing Everything I've ever done, done in my life, I've always just waited until like the absolute eleventh hour, final second, like right before <laughs> right before the car is about to go off the cliff, and you, you know you actually need to make a turn. Right. Right. That was when that every You're time. Like, Yo, let I me made, ride this yeah, edge. Every, every time I ever made a choice, it was always like, like right. a second. Um, and you know, I look back and I, I kind of wish, you know, I did, you know, everyone does this, or, or at least, I, maybe, at least I feel like everyone does. I this. mean, yeah, I can tell you, I, I have. You look back and you think like to yourself, fuck, like I wish there were certain things that I knew and I could go back and like I could have changed this. Amp's <laughs> giving me countless advice that you know what I mean. I wish in the moment I would have taken advantage yeah, of, yep, you know. Yep, and- yep, yep. But you know what? It's 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 actually I'm glad that it, everything has I. Lately, I've taken the stance of that's really just the only way it's it life. gone down. You yeah, know what I'm saying? and like I'm glad that I'm glad that it has gone the way that it has gone because there are a lot of things that have happened, especially recently, that would have never happened had I, I had yeah you know, rushed it or yeah. even yeah. I know exactly what you mean. So Say, yeah, big big moment though for sure uh, leaving because I had only known Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I grew up here. Um, this was my like. I'd never, I'd never lived anywhere else outside of Jacksonville. So, so prior to fur in my cap, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm correct, yeah, you were a substitute teacher, right? Yeah, I did do, yeah, 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 yeah. I, That's, I, I did a little substitute. substitute <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, Kelly Services. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you ever come That's to like, Jack? Yeah, you need, you, you need a job. <laughs> Kelly services will hook you up. Kelly That's like services. something only Jacksonville people would get. Like you said, Kelly services. Everyone's yeah, yeah. like, uh, "That's like saying com- com- converges." Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? Like, it's a universal thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like um, he and Jack's like, "Yo, it's a few places that everyone's been at." So. Yeah, <laughs> my mom used to work at Kelly services. Oh, she, was she quit. Cause it was stressful. Shit, my pops got a banging ass job. He had got out of the navy for like uh, two years. He was doing like the reserves and then went back in. Um, he got a job through Kelly Services, yep, yep. doing like what he was doing in the navy. Oh, that's so true. yeah, I was like, yo, Kelly Services. Kelly <laughs> Services, man, they will hook you up. Shit, we advertise it, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, but that's what's up. I man. might need to hit them up in a few months, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Letting this unemployment ride out real quick. <laughs> I heard that. Hey, look, collect, collect, collect. You know what I'm saying? So, um, still releasing music. Your latest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, latest release was what? February, right? February of 2020. Yeah, uh, a song called Bass. Gotcha. That was the gotcha. song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I fuck with bass. Yeah. Um, what do you have coming out next? Uh, I got a song called New Jack City. And that's what we were just talking about when I saw that, I saw that poster back there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 A little, um, kind of like a little uh, play on Jacksonville, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, 
but done in, in my own particular way. That's know? what that's what always stood out to me. That's what made Bowden Acre Parade so special to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I was blown away that someone had created a song about a you know a street in Jacksonville in yeah, such a way. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, like when I heard it, I was like, "Yo, I gotta find out everything I can about this dude." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, it's like one of those things where, um, you know, like the place the place that a person grows up, it it, it impacts you mm-hmm. in, in in so many different ways, both negatively and positively. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And especially home. Like the idea of your home, the neighborhood that you grew up in, all these memories are wrapped up in that. Yeah. You know, from like the, you know, like the girl that, you, you know, used to come over and, you know, you fucked in your room. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Like when your parents were in the kitchen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Or, um, or like the, the, where you cried with your mom at the kitchen table type mm-hmm. of shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or uh, where your dad, like you and your dad like got in a shouting match with each other, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Or like, or you fell on your bike here, or, right? Right. You, know what I'm you got all your these, first like, fight, yeah. yeah there's all, all kinds of memories, things. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like the, that, and that's a complicated thing to sort of, it all kind of like swirls Compose, up, yeah, yeah. It swirls up together in your head. And then um, that song in particular was just, it was one of those, uh, it was an attempt, it, it was an attempt to, I guess. Uh, come to terms with with some of those i guess things i never really worked out and you know like like you need to get it out somehow right right you know what I'm right um i don't really do the therapy thing yeah that's not my thing i think maybe that's the 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 younger generation's thing i don't necessarily believe in it for me therapy has always been me setting a goal and and shooting toward that goal and uh, and striving toward that, or I've gotten it out in my songs. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I tell um, people the process is often therapeutic. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever you're doing, the process of it, uh, you have to love it. Yeah. Because you can work so much out in yourself, you know, yeah. in your own mind. Um, talking about procrastination, going back to that, uh, that was a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I know early on in my career, I get beats all the time and I just sit on them. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd have them stashed and stored because I'd be saying, you know, I I I know that what I want to write about, I haven't been through enough yet, you mm-hmm. know, and I put it off to the side, not hold it until, like you say, the eleventh hour. They're talking, I right, look, I'm I, I got to give this to someone else. I got to do something with this beat, they're you know, to, the sell, beat. <laughs> to sell the beat to somebody else, right? Yeah. I'm like, hold up, hold up, let me see what I've been through. <laughs> yeah. I think I could turn something out to this, but um, you know. Right now, I'm making rugs. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we, which are looking dope, by the way. I appreciate that, man. I had no idea you were even doing that shit. Man, look, I was on Twitter one day. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give a shout out. No face Nia. Uh, she was doing uh, at No Face Nia. So y'all check her out. Uh, she was doing a um, Pharrell rug. Okay, nice. And it looked amazing. It's like 250 bucks, right? So I was like, wow. damn, that's not bad. You know, that's not a bad rug. Like it's a great size and everything. Yeah. But I ain't want to spend two fifty. Like it's a pandemic. I got a lot of priorities going yeah, yeah, yeah. on. You yeah, know. For sure, for sure. So I was just interested. Let me see what the process is like. Uh, I'm 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 one of those kind of people. You can't tell me anything. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. literally, if you say, "Yo, I'm thinking about putting a patch on the jacket," I'm gonna say, "Well, shit, let's make the jacket." Yeah. Yeah. You know. So. Um, I start Googling, I find the rug, gun, it was like 300 bucks, you know what I mean? So mm. this for game for everybody, you know, uh, 300 bucks for the rug gun. Uh, I started looking at the the cost of materials and whatnot, and then weighing the options of, uh, or, or the, the profit margin, you know what I mean, mm. of course. Um, so all in all, I've been doing it now, um, in the process, about three months. Um, my My gun I've been using now for a month. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started out doing it all by hand, yeah. uh, which took a long fucking time. I'm thankful <laughs> to be using my gun now. Um, and then I was waiting on materials because of everything. So now that I'm getting through the process, um, it was frustrating. 
you know? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that I was banging my head about. I've already invested a thousand dollars at least, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. into this process and I've spent a lot of time. So to to sit around with it every day, it's like ah but I tell you, man, when I'm doing it is is my my time to work on hey this is my discipline you know yeah, what i mean yeah, this yeah. is me disciplining myself this is me saying i'm not gonna put things off you know yeah. what i mean so i do talk find about that, talk about therapeutic there mm -hmm. has yeah. to be there has to be something that is is helpful you know exactly what I so i mean you know whatever it is that you're doing whatever it is that you want to do you got to love the process and yeah. of, of doing that um find ways to to cope with yourself mm -hmm. uh when doing that musically that was a challenge for me you know um yeah striving for for like you say you know you 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 want this song to be i think we spoke about this off air but you you expect for when you release this song it to be something so monumental oh yeah yeah well and, i mean at least early on I, you know like, right early on yeah early yeah on, yeah you have maybe these like naive thoughts yeah yeah exactly naive yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean you know they're ignorant in the sense you have you have no knowledge of yep, you know yep. but um you think about it and it's like when it doesn't happen that 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 can kind of set you back mentally mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with that challenge i i did i think even with new ventures at any point you can struggle with that thought of damn is this really it should i continue or do i strive and that's your moment of hey i really got to give myself therapy i got to coach myself through yeah. this and 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 find the therapeutic moments and points of this process. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and you know what? I'm glad you, you ended that sentence on the word process because mm -hmm. really at the, at the end of at the end of it all the the goal isn't really the goal it's the the, the process of the goal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, like indeed. when you you actually get to the point that you think that you were aiming for, mm -hmm. you realize that you that wasn't even the point. The it point was the, the point was all that shit that you were doing in the, to begin with. Yep. Um it's not as fun having reached the end goal yeah exactly as it is chasing it you know yeah, what i mean yeah, like yeah, i agree with that and i think that like even to bring it down to like layman's terms think about jogging in a group you know if we were all to run a mile let's just say yeah at the end of it it's like all right we did it what what's next or whatever you know what i mean your mind shifts yeah. your thought process shifts yeah. but while you're doing it i mean one you you you're motivating each other you you laughing joking making little thoughts in your head to kind of keep motivated left right left yeah. right you know yeah. what i mean yeah. um so like you say you do realize at the end or or at at at, at some point that hey everything i've done is what Exactly. I should have, or exactly. I should be enjoying more. It's because it is it, in in that process. There, it's it's there's a transformation that's occurring mm. of you know of yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you you transform as a result of the process that you immerse yourself in. So, bringing it back to yeah, music, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one thing that I see. Um, throughout your career mm -hmm. like a lot of the same instruments and mm -hmm. it, it has kind of evolved um in, yeah, it's, in the it's later definitely years start, it's starting to, to change in the later years yeah yeah but yeah so, and that's in the beginning and we'll sure. talk about that yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah so the saxophone do, do you have you ever played any instruments never mm. never no These i think i can play like I think I could play the uh, the bass line of a Nirvana song <laughs> because it was like the one thing that my friend, uh, shout out to uh, my friend Sayla, who uh, I used to be in a band back in the day. Word. I didn't play any instruments, but uh, you know, I, you, you, vocals. Yeah. Vocals. Uh, it was an all Asian hip hop band. <laughs> it was here in Jacksonville. Forgive me. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's just. It's, I wasn't Asian. No, 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 no. It's. it's it was one of those things where it was like, this was when I was in college, right? right. Um, and it was kind of like, because uh, this was the era of, you know, you had first, you know, Rage Against the Machine, and you had, uh, then you ended up having like Limp Biscuit, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop, Papa Rose, Lincoln Park, all of Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then like... It, within like the sort of like rap rock sort of sort of thing but then on the on the uh on the other side you also had like the roots mm -hmm. and then you had a lot of uh 
you had a lot of bands on like the underground that were still in, using independent such, scene mm-hmm. that were like coming through where it was like a live lot of live it was like yep. a lot of live hip hop yep. facts at the time. Yep. So we're talking about like uh, between like 99 like 1999 and like 2002. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um that was like a thing. Mm-hmm. Um so uh but yeah like by I don't want to go on that tangent. That's a, that's a tangent. Uh, uh-huh. But to answer the question, uh, my friend Sailor, who played guitar in that band, mm. I think he showed me how to play this. Like it's like da 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 So I could do that. Yeah, not very good, but I could do that. I mean, the one thing I ever learned. I could play chopsticks. and May had a little. I could play the shit. The hell out of May had a little lamb. Don't get me started. I mean, I I I can play a few songs on the keys. I could never read music. Um, I used to play piano, but I lost it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I ain't riding a bike. I have no musical like knowledge at all. Like nothing. Nothing like formal, like no formal music knowledge at all. So the the instruments just stood out to you always. Um, as far as like uh, oh oh you mean like uh, specific 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 instruments? instruments. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So like I bought like early on, I heard a lot of horns, like horns. There, I mean, well, you had on that one song, like the self titled joint. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, were, there were there was a um, there were some horns on there. Mm-hmm. There was like a lot of guitars. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, there was some live instrumentation on like some of those early records. Right. Um and well and then the first actually the first record so uh, are you familiar with Willie Evans Jr.? Like he's like local. Yes. Ja- Jackson yes. Lowe. I know exactly who you're talking about. Um uh, he actually so before King Warrior Magician Lover, which had Fur in My Cap, Carmen mm-hmm. Sita, mm-hmm. like those joints were technically that was like my second record, second solo record. Gotcha. My first solo record was uh Willie Evans Willie Evans Jr produced those beats and then uh I wrote to those beats and then me and the producer I ended up working with even to this day we co-produced like so we added things and we took things from yeah. so basically we, we had Willie Evans would send me like the beat bed and, and then, then we would kind of like that was like my first experience and oh I could kind of like modify something yeah, like yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I have like ideas about something okay cool like let like let's so maybe we'd add keys to like something or we'd add, we'd yeah. add this or maybe we would take something out and then eventually it got to the point with King Warrior Magician Lover right where uh I kind of went back to like cuz when I was in the band that I was in I was very much so uh in, I was very much involved in the creative uh, process, you know, in terms of like, oh yeah, yeah, like this would be cool if we did this. Uh, so I kind of it was it was interesting to be able to to do that, uh, but times twenty, right, with my producer because I had like insane ideas I had never been able to like put out there or, or execute, and I had this guy or still have. Yeah, you know this partner in crime yeah. who's an absolute genius. <laughs> His name is Luke Luke Walker, um, and he was able to bring to life almost every almost everything I could ever think of, anything I could throw at him, and he'd be like, "Okay, cool, I could do that." So, That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, so now in your later years, I'm hearing the more, um, it sounds like you've kind of went back to your earlier inspirations with the band sound, you know, uh, more. It's more aggressive. Yeah. It's definitely more aggressive. Upbeat. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more aggressive. It's it's more upbeat. Um, Talk about the switch, the transition in that. You know what? I think it, it's a, uh, I think it's one of those things where kind of like goes back to what we were talking about. In, in terms of like knowing, knowing, not necessarily what, not necessarily knowing what it is that you, you like, but more what you don't like. I hear that. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, cool. So I'm kind of over this or like, I don't like this anymore. Or right. Like I'm kind of done with this or this type of sound or this tempo or whatever. Um, and now it's almost as if, you know, uh, a form emerges from that, and it's hard to describe, but you know it when you see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know it when you feel it. 
You know what I'm saying? And right. um, I can, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know what the fuck I'm doing because I don't. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like, I used to, I used to, I think, c- try to pretend like I knew what I was doing, but I don't. Like, I really, um, I just, tr- it's like, you, it's, you're, you're just trusting your instinct. Even when I write, like, I don't even know why I pick the words that I write. I know you know what I'm saying? It's just like you, it's like ideas that just come to you, words that come to you. The reason why you want to use this certain sound or like you want to go with this kind of thing, or maybe like you end up sampling this or going in this direction. None of that shit's planned almost. It's like you just kind of fall down like a rabbit hole and you're Mm -hmm. like, like with bass, for instance, right? So, uh, you know, like that. Uh, it, it, this was actually in the Fader article that they posted when they they yeah, put, yeah. put then when they put the song out. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally had just I had fell down this rabbit hole of like my my brain for some reason was going down this like uh, like this like this trip down memory lane, right? And I was thinking back to when I was in high school, and I was like. It's like 94, and I was like a freshman in high school. Uh, freshman, sophomore, I don't think. 93, 94, I think I was a freshman. But uh, there was a senior at my high school, uh, Stanton. I went to Stanton. Uh, and this kid, he had a bunch of these like uh, white label records from the UK. Mm. And it was all like this crazy... Um, it's what they call the genre. Was, uh, it's what they call happy hardcore, uh, which to most people listening, they would call it like drum and bass or like jungle or whatever. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, but the difference is, well, happy hardcore is the there's a lot of uh, uh, like sped up vocal samples. Gotcha. Like sped up vocal samples, uh, a lot of like uh, piano, mm-hmm. like kind of like a melancholic emotional kind of sounding piano it's like kind of both like uplifting and sad kind of at the same time so it's like this, these pianos sped up vocal samples and like the beats are just like insane like the the bpm on bass is like 168 bpm yeah um and i remember he played me these records when i was a freshman i thought this guy was like the coolest dude ever you know what i'm saying because like you know you're a freshman you're like you're, right 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 you know you think like like the older kids are always like the, always know you and try, they, got... you, they always they know what's cool you, yeah you, you're trying to be cool you know right um and yeah he played me these records i was like yo i've never heard anything like this before um and to me it was like the most futuristic shit that i'd ever heard i'd never heard anything even to this day like i still don't hear music that that's as futuristic sounding as that and for some reason that memory had always like played itself in my mind periodically. And at some points you have memories that come to you stronger, like for some reason at some points of your life. And for yeah. some reason you'll, you'll kind of start thinking about something um, more strongly at a particular time. And you don't know why all of a sudden you have this nostalgia for this one certain memory. And for some reason, you, this memory in particular chose to jump itself out at you right like in this moment so right. so very strongly to where now you have to go and now you're online and you're diving down the rabbit hole like i was sitting there googling um pirate radio like uk pirate radio um you know drum and bait jungle like all this like shit on like youtube yeah um stuff on like i found like this blog that had all these like uh, pirate radio mixes, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and this is you know where is like all illegal broadcasting, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And like so, I started looking up all this like stuff about what was going on at that time period, and was like f- finding like all these like tracks that like literally were the type of tracks that he played for me, like in '94. Right. And then right. around the same time, and this is funny. Um, I think when I was in, it was, it, I think it was around the same time. Um, we ninety two point seven was a relatively That's new throwback. Yeah, ninety two point seven. Ninety two point seven in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 90, man, ninety two point seven was a relatively new. Uh, it was like our first 
hip hop and R and B radio station here in Jacksonville. Yeah. And uh, how long? What year was that? Like, well, uh, I remember. <clears throat> I want to say like. He said he the was, first time. The first time I remember hearing it yeah. was like ninety three. Ninety three, okay. ninety three, ninety four, maybe. But it I might. Could, yeah, it's just for some reason I just like always can remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. never could. I don't know. Right. I, I mean, I moved young. in two thousand, yeah. and it was ninety two seven. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because before that, yeah. before that, all we had was W A P E ninety five point one. Yeah. The ape or whatever. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And then they used to have a top ten, uh, where they would actually play. Funny enough. On their top ten, they actually would play uh, hip hop records. Yeah, some different. It was like a mix, mixed genre, but like it oh, was. I, uh, I remember the ape. Yeah, I remember yeah, the ape was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the ape is always gonna be like a, a big station hit. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it always has been. Yeah, it always has been. Uh, but ninety two point seven, right? Was, that was big. Like, it was huge. That 92. was big. 7. That was like yeah. when I came ninety two point seven. I mean, you wanted to enter their raffles. Yep. You wanted to do like everything. Ninety two point seven was a part of. My mom used to try and drag us out to like little events. Like they opened up a a fucking shoe store. Because of two point seven. No, they were selling fake shoes, and ninety two point seven oh, was damn. advertising. You might have seen me there, nigga. <laughs> nigga, you remember? What the, you bruh, remember that one store where they the selling twenty nine ninety nine? Yeah, bro, bro. Ninety two point seven had it all over the radio. Come on out the Beach Boulevard. Twenty nine, twenty nine ninety nine. Jeans. Wow. They had jeans. They had jerseys. They had. Bro, are you going there? Are you? It was a store full of like. Bro, they ain't had the display. They just fold had, out tables. They just had a shoe, and it was a shoe, shoe in a box, and yep. we, everybody was just destroying everything. Wow, oh my god, we had went up in there. My father said, You ain't find no shoes. I'm like, Hell no, nah, I ain't find no shoes. <laughs> He's like, Leave, like, nah. All they had was like, My the, mom was like, For $29.99, they some good shoes. I said, the, Nah, not you, for me. Nah, yeah, right. the only jeans they had up in there, you remember the platinum, fake platinum Fubu shiny oh, jeans? Lord. Yeah, that's all they had in there. I was like, Hell no. Nah. And this was, you know what I mean? This was the time when I never forget. I told um, I, I I my brother is five years older than me. Okay, right? yeah. So um, I'm from Pensacola, mm -hmm. and back then, um, ninety nine. Don't say that no more, here, man. Hey, shut up. All right, man. Don't, don't mention don't, pen, don't mention up. Pensacola here no more, man. I'm from I, Pensacola, <laughs> Florida. All right, man. Go ahead. Finish so, the story. Um, Long story short, uh, my homie he uh, he told me a story of how they used to call out people wearing fake shoes. Oh yeah, yeah, all the time. So I told fake my everything. homeboy, they call you right? Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the gig. I'm like, yo, and God rest his soul, Chris. I st I'm still mad at you about this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm. I was a freshman. I'm going into my sophomore year. Gotcha. He's a senior. I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, look, first week. Anybody wear fake Jordans, I'm going to get a referee shirt. I'm going to come in fully, you know, refereed out, right? Like Foot Locker. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to throw a flag on the play <laughs> when uh, when I see him in the fake shoes. Yeah, yeah. So I was scrolling to work. I mean, I was scrolling to school. I told him two things. I was going to get a part that year, and I was going to do that. First day, Chris had a part, and the school goes crazy. The wow. school goes crazy. The second week of school, everybody had a part, and they were like, "Yeah, Chris started it." I was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's going on here?" But he was a senior, you know what I'm saying, big yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I come into school one day, and Chris, you made it, you made it a hot line. He made it a hot song. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real, for real. <laughs> And uh, I ain't understand that then. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I come into school one day. I'm walking down the hallway, and there's this big group of people. Chris is throwing flags everywhere. No. Brr, brr, brr. And I mean, they're going crazy. Flag on the play. What are these? Son, wow. we got a hey, fake pair. You should have wow. had, had your bread up. You should have wow. brought Kevin to yourself. Yeah, man, I definitely should have. I was a young nigga. You know what I'm saying? So um, I walk in, I saw what was going on. I threw my hands up and just turned around and wow. walked out. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, man, I wasn't wearing no, uh, no fake forces. No, uh, I mean, I told a story on here one time. 
I ain't gonna tell it no more after this. But my mom, she brought her home. I told her uh, I was going into my seventh grade year. Okay. I say, Ma, I want some forces for um, <laughs> <laughs> for school. She bought me some Fubu's oh. shoes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They were crocheted and like woven. <laughs> That's nasty. Like they was bad, bro. That's nasty. But I wore the fuck out of them, man. It ain't what you wear; it's how you wear. It. Yeah, you know I what mean, I'm and and you know what? Now they would probably be considered. Oh, nah, nah, nah. No, nah, not nah, even? Nah, okay. Nah. Mm-mm, mm-mm. They looked like, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they looked like fake Air Force Ones. Like, like they had the structuring of Air Force Ones. I'm surprised they didn't get sued. Yeah. Um, except where the, the check would swoosh through. So the sides and the toe cap. Wow. Um, At no point, Fubu shoes were hot. None. Wow. So By they, the time they stepped they in the footwear, it was over. Interwoven for Fubu. leather, like leather. Wow. Okay. Thick leather. And I mean, like, yo, look, mom. I mean, I had like, honestly, I had like probably two or three pair of shoes for school my seventh grade year. You know what I mean? <laughs> when I was in ninth grade, oh, I was a hustler, brother. I uh, I was buying myself Air Force Ones and whatnot. My brother, we sat down to eat at dinner. Mm-hmm. My brother said he's selling drugs. I was like, what oh, is man. going on? I ain't selling no drugs. Sure, you wasn't. Not at that point. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, to to circle back just to the ninety two point seven thing, yeah. though, really quick. Um, and I'll put a, I'll put a cap on that. Oh yeah, uh, forgive us, man. No, Random no, 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 magic no, podcast. Yeah. Well, no, because <laughs> I, I just want to make sure you have the complete the complete right, right. answer for that. Uh, ninety two point seven on Sunday nights. Uh, bigger ranking used to broadcast oh, yeah, yeah. from Club Carousel. Yeah. And the reason I even brought up the radio station being new at the time was because, and I don't know if it was just where I lived or mm-hmm. not, I lived over by Southside Middle School. Gotcha. Um, but for some reason, I had to hold the radio antenna just to pick up the signal. Like if I wasn't holding, <laughs> it, if I wasn't holding it the yeah. right way... You couldn't I couldn't get, get the it. signal. Yeah, and I don't know if oh, it, yeah. I don't know if it was because they were new or like what the deal was. But so yeah, I, was, I used to have to lay mine against the yeah, wall. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So man, it, I think it, everybody had to go through something crazy <laughs> at some point to li- and you did to listen I got, to ninety two point seven. Because I don't know if y'all know, but ninety two point seven used to be right down here. Oh wow, I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. No. East by um, where Sam's Club at right here. Okay, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Ninety two point seven, like right next door to it. So wow. I got lucky. So once they moved right there, I ain't have to do nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I would tape this because he, he would uh, DJ live yeah. from Club Carousel. It was it was uh, Cool Runnings. Uh huh. I remember yeah. Cool Runnings. So he would uh, they would DJ live from Cool Runnings, and they would broadcast this. Now, this is how crazy this was. They, this would not happen now, right? not at all. Yeah, they would broadcast Cool Runnings live on Sunday nights. And then you would hear like yeah, I remember that. You even would hear like the fucking the you know the, him dropping the bombs and yep. all that shit and like the even when I came right. in two thousand you know, yep that. yep um, and I would yeah all that shit yep. all that shit yep. and I would record off the radio I would record that because like that was another thing I had never heard before right like all the dance hall shit that he was playing at the yeah time. and that shit blew my blew my mind equally. As much as this other shit that I had heard from, like like these UK records, right? Mm-hmm. So on bass, right? Um, this just goes to show, like I don't, like I said, like like a lot of times I don't know what I'm doing. I so for some reason it's like you start <clears throat> going down memory memory lane, and then you're clicking on one thing to another to another online, and then I found this recording of Bigger Rankin. From like ninety four, ninety five, mm-hmm. f- live. It yeah. was one of these recordings. It was like a Christmas Eve recording, and it's him. It's like a whole, like maybe like a fifteen minute recording of him just like dropping the dropping bombs, lasers. Yeah, uh, you know, like cutting shout, cutting yep, the music yep. out, doing the shout outs, all that shit. So when it came time to do this track based, like it was like all these things just like. Merged in my head, right? And it wasn't even a question of it wasn't like, oh yeah, I'm, I wasn't like trying to be a scientist, and right? Trying, right. And like it was just more like in my head, all these things made sense. Cause they all came from like the same same time period to me, right? Right. And I was like, well, what if I made this track that was like these, like uh, you know, upbeat, one hundred sixty b, one hundred sixty eight bpm. Happy hardcore records, but it sounds like Bigger Rankin is dropping this shit 
That's at crazy. Club Carousel. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. I, I sampled. Yeah. I sampled Bigger Rankin. Right, like, you right, hear the track, right. Yeah. You hear him like, and it was just we caught, we caught, we caught like the clean parts where there was no music playing. And then we were just like the part where he's like, Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like all that shit. So like we sampled that shit. And then I sampled the shit from the pirate radio like mixes, mixes yeah. that I was like listening to. And then it just all came together. And Bass like, is a track. beautiful like collage of, yeah. of sounds. I never heard um, this song. I gotta hear this say so. Yeah. Um how did it how did it go to get the uh another another legend's um blessing to uh did you have to do anything to, to drop his vocals on there? Yeah, I was just about to ask. Nah, that. I didn't Did even ask. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even ask. But I do have a bigger ranking story, though. Word. We I listen. do have a bigger ranking story. Yeah. Uh, that's, story somebody, time. that's somebody we need on this the two, podcast this year. Indeed. That's two, a goal. We're going to we're gonna get bigger rankings on here. Yep. 2000, 2006. Okay. Uh, I don't know if they still do these or not, but he used to have this event called the Duval Diamond Hood Awards. They do. AKA the Ghetto Grammys. Yep. And they still I, do that? Yeah. I won a Ghetto Grammy. Word. In, in 2006. That's, That's what's up. <laughs> it was That's called, what's up. It's called Next to Blow. It's still at my parents' house. Yeah. Um, and this is how crazy the story is. B.O.B., before he got into like the corny fucking like yeah. Bruno Mars pop, like all that bullshit, mm-hmm. he had a song in the underground called Cloud Nine was the name of the joint. And he performed Cloud Nine right before I got up on stage to accept my award for Next to Blow. Word. Um, and this was like a huge thing. That like uh-huh. the, the person- The Diamond Awards were big. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge. And it, it was, was like big. Rick Ross was in, it was in the audience. He was accepting some kind of like, like living legend award or, or like some kind of a, like a achievement type, yeah. type of thing or whatever. Yeah, um, man, at first, I, I, they used to literally do that shit out in Pickyville. Really? Pickyville, like, just, like, out, outside. <laughs> like, <laughs> hand out awards. This shit was, like, super, like, legendary. I'm talking, yeah. like, the people that were yeah. at this shit yeah. were, like, I mean, heavy, all the heavy hitters in the South right, were right. at this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, so... I didn't know they still did it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's... Yeah, news I think I, I I I know I've heard of someone saying they got a diamond award within the last two or three years. Sure, I got now, I got win one. Now. I haven't been there, you know what I mean? But it's calling it now. I'm gonna win one. I don't know what I'm gonna do to get it. I'm gonna win one. Well, dog. shit, let me go ahead and achieve that I with you, my brother. <laughs> shit. So, so, be the diamond so in a way, so <laughs> in a way, I guess. I do have <laughs> you know, <I'm> Green <laughs> ass nigga. <laughs> oh, I was gonna let you pay the diamond, brother. I, 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 <laughs> green <laughs> ass nigga. Speaking of trick, that I was gonna let you pay. I was trying to it. give us a ring. You know what I'm saying? Like they got the black bottle boys and shit. Like what could I? What <laughs> could I say? Diamond boys. I want to wow. be a part of that. Yeah. That sounds nasty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, in a long in a long about way, like. Like I, maybe I got his blessing. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause right. I got that. I got the the, the, the award, award in 2006. Yeah. But yeah, I just look at it in in terms of sampling. This actually brings up a good topic. Um, I just take shit, man. Yeah, man. Fuck I just that take shit. shit. Like I don't. I don't. Hey, think... if you mad, come see Bobby. Yeah, I mean, cause to me, to me, art. This is the way I look at art. Like, art is art is just taking art is taking other people's shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I personally don't believe in, um, I don't believe in in copyright laws in in like the, in the sense that um, that a lot of other people do. Right. You know what I'm saying. I think this. Uh, I appreciate why. Yeah, I get why. I get laws why. came you know into to play, but to think that. A copyright law wasn't created until seventy two, if I'm not mistaken. Shit, I don't even know. Yeah, man. Um, it it, it didn't even. Uh, uh, there was no copyright law for music mm. until seventy two, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. That's crazy to think to me. To me, it holds up the artistic process. Yes, you know it does because it, it entirely. It's it's like imagine how many records that we haven't heard. Great records right. that we have been deprived of hearing, right. because 
somebody was like, no, nah, you can't sample this. Right. Or because they want to charge this exorbitant amount. Yes. You know, to you yes. know, to you to, to, to even sample this. You yeah, know absolutely what I'm right. Like, um I think that's a, a, a great point. See, the only reason I'm I'm thankful for um the copyright laws, I think it was important to have that because of the 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 cultural difference yes yeah, i get you know i get saying? you know like you want to you want to compensate you know someone i, I yeah. understand that i understand but that. um i mean the way music has evolved i think the law should should have and should evolve to this day you know what i mean mm -hmm. i think that once it's made public mm -hmm. it should be able to have music or works derived from yeah 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 because to think, you know, I can't, I can't take a line, you know, a line from your song. You know, I don't like. I I say to people like, take whatever you want from anything I made. I don't care because yeah. it's about the advancement of the art. So yeah. In my in my opinion, right. Like if you could take anything that I did and make that better, or you can like transform it and make it your own, or like make something insane out of it. Like by all means, I want to see that happen. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Let me ask like, you a question. What if somebody like sampled one of your old songs and then it blow and up, blew up, went a Grammy, what not? They don't even, they don't even <laughs> mention you. I mean, would you be tight? Not really. Uh, like, I mean, if if it'd be great to, um, I mean, I guess you know what? I th I think it's because. Um, I just don't even view because I I don't even view um, wanting like I I don't necessarily want recognition in the way a lot of people do. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I know the point of a lot of people being a rapper or a singer, or artist or whatever is because they want the recognition or the fame. Um, All right. And this might make me an odd person out for. Uh, being like this, and I don't think maybe I was always like this, but I, I don't care. <laughs> like, I think, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I, because to me, success is not. That's like not. To me, that type of success has no uh, is not is no is no reflection of of the the quality of something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like like it has um everything to do with luck and everything to do with politics and everything to do with everything that's not the making of the art. You know what I'm saying? Um so for me, because I have been in situations where I, I've been in situations where uh I have a funny story. It sounds like a lie because it's so outrageous. Um, but for instance, Donald Glover. I don't even know if I should tell the story. It's <laughs> <laughs> on <Saw> you. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just say Donald Glover. So Carmen Cedar, right? Right. Um, he hit me up. This was, I guess, 2010 when the video came out. He had a Tumblr. Mm -hmm. He was like, I am Donald.tumblr.com. Right. right? Uh, he had put my video on his Tumblr and um, contacted my management. He wanted to talk to me. Um, and I met up with him. I talked to him for probably about an hour and some change. We had lunch. And... Um, he asked me about Carmen Cedar. He was like, yo, I love this track. You know, like what inspired the, the video and the song and whatnot. The video is crazy. And, uh, props props video. to Lance Drake. Lance Drake is the director for that. Lance Drake actually just directed something for, there's a band called Muse. Okay. Um, he directed uh, a film that uh, screened in IMAX mm. this, this year. Or, um, But uh, he was the direct, uh, director of the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I said I can't take credit for it because Lance was the Lance is you know Lance is the guy behind the video, mm. um, but I could take credit for the for the track. I, yeah. Like I could tell you the influences from the track for the track. Yeah. Um, you know, I told him to look up. You know, I was like, well, first off, like, um, 
I said, look up Bootsy Collins space bass solo on YouTube. And it's like this extended, maybe like 10, mm-hmm. it's almost like a 10 minute long bass guitar solo. Mm-hmm. And it's at the end of I want, uh, of I'd rather be with you, mm-hmm. Bootsy Collins. And he's just playing the bass guitar like he would play like a guitar, like, right, like Jimi right. Hendrix, you know what I'm right. saying? Um, and I told him, look up Space Bass Solo by Bootsy Collins. Listen to all of, if you haven't yet, look up Stankonia by Outkast. <laughs> if, uh, and then I was like, look up all Parliament. I would hope he had heard it. Uh, if he, mm. Being from Stone Mountain, uh, yeah, Georgia. Yeah, if you put him on that, that's pretty sad. I, Rock, I said, bro. I said, listen to, uh, now I don't know if, I don't know if he was familiar with Stankonia or not. He should have been. Right. But the other stuff, like I was telling him about, like all the funk stuff, he had no idea about. I can believe that. I can believe like, that. Like I kid you not. Like I can this is a, that. a real um this That's wild. this is a real Man, like, prior yo. to <laughs> prior to Atlanta, the show, Donald Glover was nothing like I mean, even his music didn't have Funk or soul or, or that. Yeah, that, if you listen to all those feeling. records, it didn't. It didn't. It, there's yeah. not that pre- that presence was not on any of his tracks. And then that um, what's the last one he did? Um, um, Mother Awaken or something like yeah, that. Awaken my, yeah. awaken, awaken my, awaken my love. Yeah, 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 awaken yeah, yeah. my love. Yeah. So this is kind of where I'm going with that. Mm-hmm. I don't care that I necessarily was the one who. I'm. I'm just gonna. Say, I'm gonna say right now. I put. <laughs> at least I think. That I put him on to these these records because when I told him yeah. about, I was like, look up Maggot Brain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, I gave him like certain things to look up. He he didn't seem like he knew what I was talking about. Right. Right. Um, and then um, and fast forward, I saw him. I think like 2013, stumbling out of his. He had a birthday party at the AT and T building in downtown Los Angeles. He saw me. He mentioned Carmen Cita again. Like he was still now, talking about yeah, that song. Yeah. Um, I think I saw him one more time as I was working at Ace Hotel. Is when the hotel had uh, opened up uh, from 2014. Uh, in 2014, uh, we had a Coldplay concert. We had a theater, or we had. I don't work for them anymore. We had a, a theater at Ace. We had the, all these big events there, but we had Coldplay performing in the theater. Yeah, I saw him at this uh, Coldplay concert, and that was the last time I ever talked to him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so fast forward to 2016. Um, or was it 2016? It was somewhere in that era, I want to say. 2016, 2017, whenever Awaken My Love came out, you fast forward to that. Mm-hmm. And then his single, Redbone, is an interpolation of... Carmen I want no no right. not Carmen Cita, but, but I, I'd rather I'd rather be with you. Yeah 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 I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the whole record the whole record is a funk is a funk record. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Based on all these different like influences. these these in, these influences mm-hmm. these, these records. That's interesting. So um That's crazy. so again like like I'm I That's don't. A crazy story. <laughs> I I don't know if I can necessarily take credit for it, but I'm just gonna say in that conversation. He did not seem like he was familiar with any of those, any of those uh, acts for one, or even like the the songs. By chance, he was playing dumb, or I don't know. I mean, who knows? Like, like I don't know. But uh, by any by any measure, let's just say that's not even the first time that something like that has happened. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying. And um, hey, man, you know if like that's the way it goes down, that's the way it goes down. Because to me, it's like. One person, however someone wants to take the idea mm-hmm. and run with it, they're going to do something completely different than what I would do with it. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Um, and more power to them. Congratu- yeah. Congratulations. Like if, if they take it to great success, amazing. Because yeah. um, for me, I I'm cool with just like, as long as I got a roof over my head and I'm not worried about food and I can still make my art, that's good enough for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I I know how dope I am. Right. I know what I'm doing. And I don't necessarily need the validation from from an external source to tell me that like I'm dope. Right. Like I know that I am. Yeah. And and I know that other people know. You know what I'm saying? And the ones that don't think so, then 
they don't see the world the same way that I see it. And right. okay, you right. know what I mean. Anyways, that's a long. So I got a question. Um, so we kind of kind of kind of skimmed over it. What made you want to move to LA? Because I know, like me and Joe talk about it. That's one of my dreams to get yeah. get the hell up out of here, <laughs> go to LA. So like, how was LA? And like, what made you? It, it had to be a certain situation in your life where you was like, "Hey, man, the move, the music ain't gonna pop but so much in Jacksonville." Yeah, let me go out yeah, to yeah, LA. Yeah. So, um, that was the way I thought. I think at the time, because at the time I was wanting to, I was wanting a form of success that looked more like what we were just talking about, right. like the recognition. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to like. I wanted a sense of validation. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I wanted the world to know like oh, right, yeah, yeah, right. like like I'm dope you know what i mean um and i felt like that wasn't going to happen here because like i felt like it could only go so far um there aren't enough outlets and you know what and i guess at the time the internet wasn't like the way it was now or the you know, um and and if i guess that's where my priorities were at the time then that wasn't such a i guess that's that wasn't such a bad decision to make like like it made sense to me at the time to do that yeah um, yeah, I, I, I felt like at the time I felt like I had something unique and special that, that everyone, more people, not everyone, but you know, more people than where I could get it to. Like I needed to get it out to, to, to that, to I that, mean, shit, it worked. Yeah. you know, yeah. to that level of, of, of an audience. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I guess you know it did to an extent. I guess it did to an extent. Um, but it's like it's like what we were just talking about earlier with the process, right? You realize that's not even the you realize that's not even the point. Like you get to a certain thing, and then you're like, oh, that's it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Definitely understand that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's not to say that people shouldn't, because if that's still like speaking to you. That might be something that has to be addressed. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I c would not be able to say, I would not have the mentality that I have now if I hadn't addressed that specific desire to do that. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm a big believer in you got to just follow, you got to follow your gut instinct, follow your, like, listen to the emotions. People like to, 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 to numb themselves and not listen to what their emotions are telling them or listen to what their their gut instinct is telling them i think you need to follow those things that's like your body's natural alarm system going off is telling you this is something you have to do and you we don't know why life is a mystery i don't fucking know why i get some of the feelings that i do but it's something that's telling me i need to act on it and i'll act on it and then i'm going to get another alarm bell go off and then it's going to tell me to act on that and it's all unraveling and emerging before my eyes. You know what I mean? So, anyways, I guess that was. <laughs> you answered it. So, um, when you got out there, like, how was it? Did you did you fuck with it? Did you? I loved it at first. Loved it at first. I did. I, I loved it at first. No more parties in L.A. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> I, I, lo I loved it at first, and I loved it because it was so it was so new to me. And it was something I had only experienced in, in like tiny, uh, in, t in small doses, basically. You know, like I'd gone down to Miami during, you know, uh, like winter music conference and and just down there for like little events or whatever. You know what right. I'm saying? Um, so I had experienced it, and or even like like you know taking trips up to New York. I gone, uh, you know, I played a show in Brooklyn once, and I had experienced some of that like like the parties and stuff like experienced some of that in like i said in these small doses and then finally being like in the thick of it and experiencing that for the first time that to me was yeah like i loved it at first um and you know it that changed yeah it just wore off that changed that yeah. yeah, changed and um i think you know your belief your beliefs change over time you know the person that you are you, you know, that click, um, or again, like I has like I hate saying change. Like I, I want to say like Evolve. it's more like it. It's more like it. It the only word I can really think of to use is it emerges. So you just start like figuring out like oh you know what I'm not really about that. 
I thought I thought that was something I was into. Um, but yeah, so like 12 years later, I have a completely different feeling about what LA is and what it represents. And I still have love for certain people that are, are there. And there are people that I fuck with that are still, you know, plenty. I have actually a lot of people that are there that I still fuck with. But overall, as far as like the industry is concerned and like, um, and what a lot of like the culture like represents and like just like the mentality and a certain obsession with mm -hmm. with different things i'm i don't like i'm it's just not for me right um and ultimately is why i'm you know i moved back i mean obviously obviously covid accelerated that decision making process for me but um right. it was something that was already in the works you know, me coming back here. Did you um, always have plans to come back home? It wasn't clear to me. Like I always said in the back of my mind, like, yeah, I'll eventually come back. My mom would always get on the phone with me. Mm. I'd call my mom every week All right. Um, on Sundays. And, uh, and then we would talk and then she'd be like, all right, so when you're coming back home? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, like that's how moms are. Yeah. And then uh, I'd be like, oh, I don't know yet. I don't know. It's not time yet. Yeah. It's not time yet. She's like, well, when are you going to know? When are you going to know it's the time to come back? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to know it's the right time to come back. Right. Um, yeah, I never I never knew really. Like, I, It was just kind of like a hazy picture in my mind. Um, and then and then like the what started as like this kind of like whisper in the back of my, my my head back of my thoughts eventually grew louder and louder and louder and louder to the point and each time i started taking you know i was taking trips back home i come back here and you know i start you know i'd go out when i would come back and you maybe do a show uh, you know on one of my trips back just hang out with some people i knew before you know like um moving i hang out with those people go out with my, my family, different places. And then eventually, yeah, like the things that I had overlooked before and took for granted before all. And then, and even like some of the new things, there's a lot of new things here that I think are awesome. Like here in Jacksonville, they're kind of popping off. And uh, it was just all these things started to like kind of speak to me more loudly, more loudly each time. And I was like, you know what? I think it is time to come back. Right. <laughs> you know? So I hear that. Yeah. What exact differences did you see in like in Jacksonville from when you lived there? When you lived there, what was it? How long were you in LA? Like twelve. I was in there. I was in LA for twelve years. It's a long ass time. Yeah, I moved in uh, two thousand eight. Mm, two thousand eight. Yeah. All right. So what exactly did you see different in Jacksonville? Because uh, I may be missing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, no. It, it, I, the for, city, the city is building a little bit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I might yeah. be missing something. Yeah. Well. um, <clears throat> I saw, well, I think there's a different, there's a younger generation that's starting to come up now that I think are, they don't have the same hangups as maybe like, what we had. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they have, they have a different outlook on maybe the world in general, because these are people that grew up not even knowing that the internet like is like a new thing. Like they grew up always just like having, having the access, internet, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, they didn't have to sneak and get on or ask <laughs> yeah, permission yeah, right. to say, you know, <laughs> like that was, that's crazy to think about. Yeah. You know, it's just like the, um, the constant access that people have, have to it. We have it all on our phones now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, there's like, I think a different mentality in like the younger generation I see that's kind of refreshing to me. It's like, we're just going to do this like ourselves. Yeah. We don't care. Like we're just do we're like we're gonna do it. Yeah, we're I gonna mean, do it here. Like we're gonna make it pop here, you know, mm -hmm. like we're gonna make it happen here. Um people that I knew that were my age, like had opened up like bars and venues and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and I thought that was really cool, you know. Um even like that something like the town center, mm -hmm. like when I had moved. The town center had just opened up. Yeah. It was like maybe like a year or maybe like a year or two, maybe maybe like a year. I want to say even. Yeah, it opened in two thousand seven. Yeah, uh -huh. so you know what I'm saying. So like, 
And I ha- I wasn't even really around. Like I was I was here for like one year of the town center, and yeah. then I come back and like the town center is like huge this monstrosity. Like every time huge. I come com- come back, it's like there's more parts to it. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, there's so much land that they trying to buy yeah. and build on. And, so. and all these like, if you had told me that we would even have, I know it's kind of a silly like example, but you know, like even just like saying like Jacksonville has a Nordstrom's, like what? Like, if you told me, like, the person that, like, go, went to Regency and the Avenues, like, right, as a mall right. when growing yeah, up, yeah, like, and you, you tell me that we have Nordstrom's in Jacksonville? Yeah. yeah. You know, and like. when you left, Regency was popping. Now yeah. Now like, yeah. it's dead. Like, there's nothing going yeah, on. Yeah, there's Regency. nothing there at all. Regency was popping still when you left. Yeah. yeah I think it stopped popping around 2009, mm-hmm. maybe. So, you know, so, it's like. There was a shooting in there and that killed everything. Yeah. Well, the mall industry. I I watch a lot of video. The mall industry period yeah. is dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that to me. Um, and then I see, you know, like just, uh, you know, like lurking, kind of lurking online, and like seeing uh, different events that were happening around town, um, and seeing. Um, y'all know Malcolm Mal Malcolm Jacks, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he actually shot. Uh, he shot the single artwork for uh, New Jack City. Mm. Um, we went out shooting the other night, um, and uh, the mayor. Yeah, Malk has been on this podcast thirty times. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the listeners know who he is. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, um, yeah. I bring up Malcolm because uh, he's a, a prime example of things that are going on here that like would never have happened before. Like I went to this thing, this was in October, I think. He had like he curated this thing downtown. With the um uh Art the, Republic. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it was American, this huge um, beach. It's yeah, that's beach. Just, yeah. Yo, they had um there was a jazz band playing in downtown. Mm. They had all these mosaic murals that were up on the old public library, the, mm. the old main library downtown. Mm-hmm. Um and then they had um this photographer who had projected? It was like this short film, and oh, projected it on the side of the two different ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. projected it on the side of the building. Yeah, and uh, yo, we would have never had that before. I I know. I, I mean, I I took my hat to him and Jordy and a couple of the the others that that work you know alongside them. Like, I mean, what they're doing is incredible, mm-hmm. incredible. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of people here that have, and I say this. You know, I think it's just a matter of being removed for a period. You know, I yeah. lived in North yeah, yeah. Carolina for five years. Um, I think I was out of Jack's for six years, you know, total. And um, in that time, I, I, you know, I come back and I see, like you say, the younger artists, what they're doing is unbelievable. Yeah, there's some there's some talent. Yeah. Unbelievable. There's a lot of, there's a lot and, of talent. And, and, and they're curating views. Yeah, in such a way, you know what I mean. So, yo, I played the show uh, recently. Um, I had a show at Archetype, mm-hmm. which another venue that is owned by Honestly, a friend of mine. Had it not been for COVID, I would have been there. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I mean? yeah. And like, you know what? Like, I'm kind of like, eh, I'm kind of cool on the shows right now too, right, because right. like, it's still a little weird. You right. know what I'm saying like, yeah. um, which also again, like I said when we were in the car, the reason I'm even wearing this is because yeah, you know I. I'm staying with my parents at the, at the, at the time right. right now. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Archetype, a venue owned by a friend of mine. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's just crazy to me because like, like you own a venue? Yeah. Like, yeah. wow. Okay, cool. But I bring it up because I bring up the show because I played um, played the show and this kid that opened up for me, Black J is his name. Mm. I know exactly who you're he's talking dope. about. Yeah, he's crazy. Dude dope. can yeah. spit. Like yeah. he's yeah. got insane For rhymes. Real. And I'm like, yo, like how I mean, I don't even know how old he is. He's probably like early twenties. Yeah. Early I could, to mid twenties. Yeah. I couldn't rap like that when I was <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the way things have evolved. There's this other too. kid that performed at the uh at this event that Mount put together too. Uh um Jaquan. Uh, Tyree, another or whatever. crazy artist, man. He's really, really dope. I can't rap like that. Nah, he's how early how old? 20. How old yeah, is he? He's, he's like probably like 20s. twenty, yeah, like twenty, maybe twenty, twenty one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, like I still like I'm I'm forty one. I can't rap like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Crazy like crazy with it. He so dropped like, a uh, Doom tribute just recently, and man, 
insane. Yeah. So, I mean, like, uh, there's a lot of talent here. I mean, that's not, again, that's not my, that's not my, that's not what I do. Like, my, my, my skill set is more, like, I'm not trying to be the, like, the most rappingest rapper, or the most singing and singer, because I'm not the best at either of those things. But I'm, like, the best at what I do in terms of, like, in terms of having, like, a unique vantage point and like like there's like a uh, my goal is more of like a like a i want to innovate mm. that's my more my thing you know what i'm saying um but yeah in terms of pure technicality like bro i mean just the two of them is yeah. they're like insane yeah, yeah out of this world and i mean i love i love what 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 the artists are doing these days you know what i mean from jacksonville you know um there's some dopes um uh, R and B singers here too. Like, oh my like, god, man! Yeah, crazy, crazy R and B singers. Yeah, There's yeah, a few yeah. of them. Yep. Even the female rappers yep. are, mm-hmm. are, are 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 great, great, yep. great. So I mean, you know, it's a lot to see. You know, having having experienced a little bit here in Jackson and then going away, seeing things from like you say a different vantage point, and then yeah. coming back and. Cause that wasn't like before. It seemed like a handful of people. Exactly. That did exactly. Shit. You had, even if it, even if you were in a room of fifty rappers, you had a handful that were good rappers or took it serious, or you could actually talk with them enough about music to say, all right, maybe we could do something. Maybe we could talk further, set up a show, something of the sort. Networking is possible. Mm-hmm. Um, now, man. Shit, they got a coalition. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot actually. There's a coalition. They uh if I'm not mistaken, um Black J is a part of a group called Love Culture. And they they what they do I know as Love a Culture. Collective. I know Love Culture. I think they're they're actually separate though. Well but I know, oh, I know got you, got yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 well yeah. I know um Love Culture is like but they got separate Flash. artists. They got yeah. Flash of Samurai, they got uh, um uh, uh, Che, che. Cheech, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they got um, man, my dog, <laughs> he gonna kill me for this one. Um, There's a is a collective though. Man, it's a great yeah, group, yeah, yeah. man. So um, easy, easy, man. Uh, so uh, yeah, a great group of rappers, but um, like I say, seeing it all today. I think it is a lot to appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did I have another question? I think that's it. You got any other questions? Nah, man, I think that's it for me. <clears throat> man, you have answered everything for us. Thank you. I appreciate appreciate all y'all having me. One more question. How I felt when you got the, when, like, you said Pharrell? Was it Pharrell and Pharrell, Kanye? Kanye? How did you feel with that? And, like, how exactly did you, like, did you have any um secrets to when like to make your songs blow up, did you just like post them and they just kind of like took off? I posted them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I wish, I up. wish I knew. Yeah, I, was, I just wanted to ask because yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think most people when they when you get asked that question, they're like, "Shit, I just post that shit." Yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it just did what it did. So. Or some yeah, people, or, or some people answer. try to play it off and or like, "Yeah, I knew this was gonna." Like, no, you didn't know. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? No it one really struck. knows. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No one really knows. You can't predict the future like that. Not in, not in, as complex as the world is. It's it's you can have things like that happen, but you can't you can't map those things out. Right. You know, you could plan something to the T, but there's a huge difference. There's a huge gap between like what happens in theory and and like in in a plan that you write down on a piece of paper and what actually happens in the real world. You know what I'm saying? Like that jump from the piece of paper to the real world is, I mean, it's an immeasurable gap. Like that's huge. So, um, yeah, like I, it was a MySpace bulletin when I posted, uh, when I posted the firm, a capsule song in the video, uh, I was just crazy. like, yo, I did this video. Cause like how else right, I, I right. didn't even know how else to put it out. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, I was like, yeah, I did this video, check it out. And then from there, um, I mean, I just, I saw it get posted on different blogs. Um, and then the, like the, 
I guess the quote unquote importance of blogs, um, of, or of which blogs were picking it up, like the reputation of, of which, which ones were picking it up, that started increasing. You know what I mean? And then it went from like these like personal joints to like now it's on, um, I don't know, there was this, this one dude, his name was um, F Luxury B, but I think he had like a pretty a decent, um, he had a blog that some people were checking for, but like them and then A Life, they put me on their, on their website or, and it was like Wu-Tang, uh, it was like Wu-Tang, Bun B, Nas, or, and then you yeah. see my name like down here, like Rob Roy, and so people are like, oh shit, well this must be, Something. This must be somebody. Yeah. If they're putting him with like these names and like he's on the A Life website, so there's like that legitimacy. Yeah. You know of that kind of cosign, and then so you start seeing things like that, and it it kind of is a snowball effect because now, uh, okay, so these people are like kind of fucking with it, and then next thing you know, ends up it ends up on Kanye University, and then from there, I mean, you know, obviously Kanye is astronomically big now he was even big back then you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. you're looking this is 2009 his influence was huge back then right. even still right um so and people were paying attention to him so anything that he put up on his website now all of a sudden it's got all these eyeballs on it yeah. um and yeah i mean with that you know it's gonna come like you're Pharrell calling you on the phone and um I have I mean I have so many stories from that era man it's like so you, you, know, a, you actually talked to Pharrell I talked to him on the phone yeah I was there yeah um he was very intense you want to hear those stories also by the way he was, hey man this is Pharrell I want to get that record he's for like, him, man he's like who who the who the fuck are you <laughs> who where the fuck did you come from you know what i'm saying like the pharrell voice you know what yeah. i'm saying and he was like yo yo what yo what the yo for, for real like and then i was like i was just like you know like this like really like just yeah. humble and like low-key because i'm speaking to like someone that is i mean, I mean a legend right, you know right. um and my roommates at the time i lived in like kind of like this real world style house where i had like four roommates yeah um, they were all crowded around me when I was like on the phone. Um, but yeah, like, I, and I didn't even really know what to do in that particular situation. Um, but yeah, oh yeah. And I was like, he, he asked me, you know, what my ethnicity was. And I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I said, well, I'm half Filipino and I didn't even get the rest out. And he was like, oh, oh, we fuck with the Pinoy. Yo, we fuck with the Pinoy. You know what I'm saying? And he was started talking about the Philippines and like Chad. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And um, yeah, man. So like that was kind of a wild conversation. Um, Chris Brown, like I met Chris Brown um, at the A Life store that was in Hollywood. Uh, I didn't even know. You know how like when you see someone out that's famous, a lot of times you don't even expect right to see them like out in the right. real world because right. you yeah. always just see them on a TV screen or a computer screen or whatever. I didn't even, so I didn't even realize that he was who he was until like he, he came up like, like this close and like dapped me up and was like, bro, you got the hardest song out. Like, and I'm just like, Oh shit. This is Chris, <laughs> this is Chris Brown. And, um, so yeah, I mean like all of those situations were really cool, man. Like, you know, um, especially experiencing a lot of those things for the first time. Um, but I've had a lot of those things happen. Like I had like like MySpace. Like I met Erica Badu. Like um, her the the guy that I guess was quote unquote managing her at the time, or was a manager for her at the time. He hit me up on MySpace. Like this is when I put the first record out, dollar dollar out of fifteen cents. Yeah. He's like, Yo, Erica, Erica wants to uh, meet you. You know, she's like, she she's really fucking with these these songs. Right. Um, I ended up going to Dallas. Uh, this was in uh. 2005 i guess yeah 2005 um i went to dallas and i met america badu she's she owned a movie theater i don't know if she still does uh called the black forest theater in dallas and she was having a going away on tour party uh she was going on tour with flow a tree uh queen latifah and jill scott yeah. um and i met her at this party but like all these things like 
bro, like a lot of these things just kind of just like slipped through my fingers because I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing really. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, um, like it's, there's a lot that I didn't know. Like, um, I still don't, but like I knew even, I knew even less back then. You right, know what I mean? Right. Um, but I met like pretty much, and pretty much all the people that I would have wanted to meet that are almost all the people. Like I met Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Uh, from a tribe called Quest, uh-huh. um, we hung out. I was in uh, in New York. Uh, we had pizza at his at his apartment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like talking to mm-hmm. someone like him, talking to um, I met Devonte from Jodeci, right. which was like that's like seeing a unicorn out yeah. in the public because like he never yeah he's he like a rec- he's like yeah. a recluse basically. Um, but that was like in 2013. I literally literally kneeled on the floor in front of him because Jodeci is like my favorite R&B group of all time right. I like kneeled on the floor in front of him I yeah, even like this. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah it, like so I'm kind of like there were, they were it was it was cool you know what I'm saying it was cool um, at the same time it's like um, it's like okay I, you, you, go, you go back what you just wish you would probably make some more music with them or something like I would have to get. I would have to get a studio. With. I was with Erica Badu. She man, flew me out. I would have to get some even, songs. Don't even. Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. I would have been barking. Roo, roo. Oh. Yeah, you know, I, I hashtag Badu Coochie. I think I was. I think yeah. I was so. <laughs> I, need that. I think I was just so young. Well, we he some. We some horn dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll you know what? So you know what was funny is, um, she was starting. The idea was that she was going to start a label called Control Freak Records. And the only person that was on the label was Jay Electronica at the time. <laughs> but it wasn't like like a label and like the legit, like we got distribution through right, blah, blah, right. blah sense. You know what I'm saying? It was like kind of just this idea that was like incubating at the time and kind of floating around in her head that she wanted to do this. Yeah, And that was the whole reason. That y'all met. Yeah, because potentially there, there, there could have been something there. Um. Yeah, I'd probably just drop the ball on that. Like, I should have kept. In, I should have got her information in part. Like her particularly, I should right, have got her right. her information, um, and uh, and kept in touch with her because she's like, yeah, yeah, keep in touch. I kept in touch with Paul, um, whose number I had. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that. Yeah. You know, know there's there's a lot of that. I just didn't know, like, you know, what's a appro- what's appropriate, like, what's the um, what's the appropriate thing to do in that type of situation. What can what can this artist actually do for me? You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it's just like, like when I spoke to Pharrell on the phone, it was like, you're signed to Star Trek. Like, don't talk to don't, don't fuck with anyone else. Like, don't talk to. This. But then, if you can't get in touch with Pharrell after that. Like yeah, it's like what? Yeah, it's not real. You know what I'm saying? It's just like sometimes, like a lot of times in in like Hollywood in particular, what I came to understand about the industry was that uh, a lot of people just talk shit. You know, Um, it's like kind of in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, like especially if you have like something that's hot at the moment, or if you got like the hype, that you have the hype of the moment. Yeah, people. Um, You know, people get caught up in that. Just like just like anything in life, you know, like anything new in life, you know, like the attention is focused on that for a specific period, and then once the newness of that thing wears off, then it's like on to the next. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's like a lot of people just kind of talk, and uh, and and a lot of people, there's not really a lot they could actually even do for you, yeah. you know. Um. But it's cool. It's cool in the sense of like, yeah, I grew up listening to this person or I have records by this person, you know, that I play a lot or that I've played a lot. And it's cool, you know, like when I was looking for when I was looking for that validation, when I, you know, when I felt like I needed like that validation back back then, um, I guess it was sort of like this reassuring thing like, oh, yeah, you're 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 going you're on the right path or right. you're going on the right you're going down the right path, you know. Um, but yeah, like now I realized I don't like, you don't need anyone to tell you that. It's like when I was younger, I wanted to go to art school because, um, like I, I felt 
I felt like I wasn't a real artist because I went to UNF. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was a painting and drawing major. Mm -hmm. And I had this thought built up in my mind that I would only be a real artist once I went to a real legit art school, art pro yeah. like an art yeah. program at a real art school, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I could call myself an artist. But, but I had to live in New York City and go to this certain school and like, and then be in this full sale. Yeah, for you me. know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> and, and then you get this thing built up in your head that like, that is what makes you this thing. And it's not, that's not what makes you the thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so yeah. Yeah, you, all you need now is YouTube. You don't really need yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. on YouTube. You learn anything you need to know. Yeah, I yeah. tell you what, <clears throat> you ain't lying there. I'm I'm gonna get into furniture next. There you, you gonna go. Furniture with the gun. You gonna make furniture with that gun? Uh, no. I'm about to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> the all purpose. The all purpose <laughs> right, gun. Shit. I carry that on my hip. Yeah. Right, yeah you gonna whip up a couch with that, right. with that rug gun? <laughs> That'd be crazy. Shit, you get caught in a sticky situation. You know it turns what I mean? Into, like, shit hey, turns into the... <laughs> I give you stitches, motherfucker. <laughs> um, I have been looking at like building videos. I don't know if Joe told you we're trying to get a podcast studio. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. we're yeah. trying to... Okay. I was looking at shit because I kind of want to build my own like podcast set. So yeah. I've been looking at a lot of like wood building videos. Oh, trust. Like I'm that. on it. Like I went to a wood shop class. Come on, man. Oh, we can do anything, uh, though. I ain't handy, man. I'm like, handy. look. It's going to be a nail through my hand, oh, literally. Shit. Nah, I'm Probably. good, man. I'm good. <laughs> shit, I done built all these goddamn frames at the house for these rugs. So I know my neighbors hate me. I just be nailing shit. One day I, I walked Here. outside. <laughs> Oh no, nah, I'm hammering. Oh, like, oh, you ain't got gotcha. the gun. I'm hammering. Whack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whack. Uh, one night it was like 10 p.m. I went downstairs. It was the assistant manager apartment. I'm right outside her door, like on the outside, just whacking that shit together. A man came outside. He was huffing and puffing. I turned around. He was like. Oh man, I was just trying to see what's going on out here. Yeah. I thought some kids were playing. Say, nah, man, give me a minute, I'll be done. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I hate, I hate myself for it. Like I know they, I know they mad as fuck, but right, fuck yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hey, it's all about the dollar. You know what I mean. We trying to get this money right now. Get so money, man. Trying to do the shmoney dance this year. Hell yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, so Rob, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. It's yeah. around an hour and thirty minutes. That's usually what we do, about hour 32 hours okay yeah. so, like, so we're gonna wrap pay it up. for more <laughs> patreon.com slash all right so at some point we're gonna have to get you back on man get some more stories and, and oh yeah i got plenty indeed. of those for sure hey, story time with mr jefferson like that's yeah, that's, that. that's like just a fraction yeah right, i can so believe it anything you working on anything you want to plug before we get up out of here um yeah i guess just listen to uh listen to the last the last single i put out which is uh based yeah. Um that's on my uh Spotify uh everywhere man. Yeah, Apple all my socials, music, all yeah. my socials are at uh Rob Roy FM. Okay. And um yeah, and be on the lookout for this this new joint. Uh I'm just waiting on the producer to waiting on my producer to send me the uh the new modified version of it. But uh, yeah, it's called New Jack City and uh the single uh, artwork. The photograph was taken by uh, by Malcolm, by Mal Mal Jacks. Yeah, friend of the show, Mal Jacks. Mayor. Shout out to him. Um, real quick, before we do go, I do yeah. want to ask: um, Is that going to be the thing? Like, uh, like, are you kind of at the point now to where it's like I'll release singles more so than projects, or I'm doing things as um inspired? Kinda, yeah, kind of as it as it comes. I think. Yeah. Um, I and I know that's a tough question. Like, I even hate getting asked. Yeah, like no, that, but, but that's that's a good question though. Um, yeah, the more I kind of, I guess, I, I guess maybe if it feels right to do like a project, um, like I released two songs. This was like maybe two years ago. I think yeah. I released two songs. It was like Trees and Freak mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. Um, and then that felt right. Like for some reason, those two songs felt like they needed to be put out at the same time together. Um, I like how Apple Music has that like released on on like they're 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 attached as a single yeah as a single like the together the two yeah, songs yeah, yeah 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 so um yeah so so certain things like that to me like 
if it makes sense or if it feels right to me, like then I, I will I will do that. Like if these things, if, if I have a couple joints and they all seem like they go together, then yeah, like I'll, they should all come out at the same time. Um, but yeah, as of right now, especially the way I'm working, because you know I came back here, I'm, I kind of reshifted my whole mentality on a lot of things. But um, first and foremost, I'm trying to stack. Because uh, I want to self fund. Yeah, this is bag. I want to self fund everything that, mm -hmm. that I'm gonna do moving forward. You know what I mean? It's just a lot more. You have a, a lot more free. You have freedom and independence. You know, and you're free to move in in the ways that you want to move, not dictated by you know feeling like someone else is like kind of watching over your decisions or whatnot. Uh, so um, I have plans, um, but yeah, everything is just kind of like by ear right now like definitely um single on the way but i also want to do like a video for the for for that single but i'm also in my mind thinking like well i just put out bass and there is sort of a similar energy between these two so maybe like it's like a double video or maybe it's just like two videos kind of shot in the same style mm -hmm. um but uh but that's coming down the pipeline so maybe some uh like a video or two um for these uh these two latest songs and then um merch i want to finally get some some t-shirts made up finally and uh playing more shows i want to get to get to doing some more shows well you know it's tricky because things uh, open up yeah, yeah, yeah but um getting more shows uh underway uh i really just want to like do everything that i haven't been able to do you know it's hard to do things when you don't have you know like you're kind of just scrape scraping by like you mm -hmm. Um, so I want to have like the, the you know get get all the pieces yeah. in place and then just start like doing these things and just do everything the the, the way I, I would I would would have liked to have done you know yeah. from the get, and uh, eventually touring would be nice too like like whenever you know that's a thing that can happen. Um, but I really I want to break it down. Everything I want to do is break break it down to the most simplest form, mm -hmm. take it down to the smallest simplest form that I possibly can, bring it back to to local you know bring it back to like uh things that are within my grasp right start here um eventually if i'm gonna tour then do like in the southeast you know so like northeast florida southern georgia mm -hmm. uh eventually make my way down florida mm -hmm. and then maybe eventually start going up the east coast atlanta right. etc North Carolina, et cetera. You know right, what I mean? Like right. um, maybe eventually make my way further up, but yeah. really focus my efforts here locally first and foremost, make Jacksonville my home base, mm -hmm. literally in every right. sense of the word. This is the home base. This is where every all my operations I want to be coming from here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and even like when I reached out to Malcolm, I was like, yeah, like I want to do more things that are like, locally sourced mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like like that's important to me i want to reflect like i want to reflect the environment that i'm from and like the people that are here that are doing things and i want to put that into what i'm doing and, and put that out there so uh, if i can if it's at all possible i want to keep it as as um as jacksonville based as possible like yeah. there'll be exceptions obviously because there's other people that you fuck you know, with other fuck people with, that you obviously. look at and say, yeah. yo, this is creative as yeah. fuck. I, so, yeah. like, for there might be directors that maybe they're not from here and, like, that sort of thing. But if possible, if there's a chance for me to, if it makes sense in my mind, I would like to be able to just, like, okay, let's keep this Jackson on the first, build it from here, and then eventually, like, once it has some roots, like, real roots, and, like, there's kind of, a, like, a, a thing going again, um... Yeah, now we take the show on the road a little bit more. Yeah. So. I can dig it. I totally respect that. Yeah. So um, we're going to plug our shit, man. Uh, Random Acts of Podcast. Another successful episode. First episode. Mm -hmm. 2021. Yes, indeed. Uh, Thank you again for yeah. coming on. Appreciate Thank you, you one more time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so yeah, go on um, Apple Podcasts, we're on there, Random Acts of Podcasts, Spotify, all that shit, and the most important thing, sign up to our Patreon, patreon.com slash backslash REO Podcast, get the episodes early, uh, be in our, 
we live streaming right now. Our chat, they talking shit, but uh, it's all good. <laughs> Shout out to them. <laughs> get in the uh, get in on the bonus episode. Yeah, get a bonus you know? episode. We about to start uh, recording those next week. Yes, the ones indeed. for 2021. Uh, me and Joe, we got our own podcast that we do by ourselves called Deeper Than Rap, where we in, we uh, go over uh, rap albums. We just did which one? Did we? we just did Get uh, Richard Die Trying. Yeah, yeah, Fifty Cent Get Richard Die Trying. So check nice. that out. Got a bunch of good shit on there, man. So shout out to everybody on our Patreon. That if you want to join the Patreon, oh damn, the camera just went off. So I guess it's perfect. Well, we got we still got this one. So. <laughs> We out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> with that said, <laughs> with all that said, we out.